I waited a long time for the M4 Max to come to the Mac Studio, and when it did, I had to order this computer day one. I've been using this almost every single day for the last few months, and in this video, we're gonna talk about all the things I love about this computer, and a few things I think Apple needs to do with the next version of the Apple Mac Studio. So the first thing I noticed as soon as I started this computer was how it could handle anything I threw at it. I do a lot of video editing, some photo editing as well, and some music production, and this has handled any different workload I've thrown at it with ease. This computer is not the computer that you buy if you want to just be browsing the web or writing emails. It's going to be way overkill for that, but I think that's one of the great things about the Mac Studio is that the power of it is so high compared to any of the other desktop computers that Apple has ever put out, especially if you compare this to the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini can handle any of your day-to-day -day tasks fine, and it also can handle video editing, photo editing, audio recording, stuff like that, but when you compare it to the Mac Studio, that's when you really start to appreciate all the things that the Mac Studio just takes up a notch. So playback scrolling is a lot smoother on Final Cut Pro, video export times are improved, and just the general snappiness of the machine is faster due to the increased memory bandwidth and the faster SSDs that Apple puts in the Mac Studio than what they put in something like the Mac Mini. I didn't get the stock M4 Max Mac Studio though. Unfortunately, I decided to upgrade and I got the one that had 64 gigabytes of RAM, a two terabyte SSD, and I got the 16 core CPU, 40 core GPU M4 Max, which one of the biggest cons of the M4 Max Mac Studio is as soon as you start to upgrade it, the price is gonna get pretty crazy on this. So I think that most people could totally get by with the $2,000 machine, but it is gonna limit you in a couple of your use cases. And we'll get to that here in a little bit. The Mac Studio has run very well though it's handled all the final cut workloads that i've thrown at it with ease so even when i'm running multiple 6k clips at the same time it still doesn't have any issues with playback and you just notice the little things like audio waveforms buffering or when you make a cut it re-renders the clips very quickly when you compare it to something like the macbook pro or a mac mini as well it's just a lot snappier and a lot of the features like the magnetic masking and some of the new advanced AI features are working really well on them. I also noticed the Mac Studio will open and run Waves plugins or other audio plugins a lot smoother than the Mac Mini does or my older M1 Max MacBook Pro would sometimes struggle when I was running a lot of audio plugins and also trying to play back 4K clips at the same time on Final Cut. So what I've really appreciated about the Mac Studio is that it's just taken my workflow and made it a lot smoother and where I don't have to do things like wait till the end of editing the project to apply all the audio effects. I can apply the audio effects as soon as I import my project clips and it all still plays back perfectly smooth on Final Cut. Another thing I've really appreciated about the Mac Studio is all the extra ports on it. So I love the SD card reader on the front, use it with some of my cameras, and there are the two USB ports on the front. Those unfortunately top out at 10 gigabits a second. And then on the back of it, there's four Thunderbolt 5 ports. And Thunderbolt 5 has been really neat to see all the bandwidth that you're able to use with some of the new docks that are coming out and also with faster Thunderbolt 5 SSDs. Thunderbolt 5 SSDs can sometimes be just as fast, if not even faster than the already very fast Mac Studio SSD. SD. Also love that from the factory, you get the 10 gigabit ethernet port and the headphone jack on the back is always handy. And you also have HDMI headphone on the back and a couple USB-A ports, which is nice to not have to carry around dongles or you don't have to use this with a dock depending on the peripherals that you're using with it. A couple things I do disagree with Apple though, I think they should have had some sort of a headphone jack on the front of it because that would be a lot more convenient than reaching around to the back. So really the only way to solve this is by getting a dock that has a headphone jack on the front or you could always buy a little USB to audio adapter if you really wanted to have that on the front of it. One of the reasons I bought the Mac Studio is because I edit a ton of videos and sometimes I'll have five to six projects that I'm exporting all at the same time. And what's great about this computer is it just batches right through them and spits them out. Sometimes in times that feel completely ridiculous. I exported a 10 minute 4K project with a couple adjustment layers, audio plugins, and it was also down sampling 6K to 4K for the export. And that took about two minutes and 40 seconds on the Mac Studio. With the M4 Mac Mini or the M4 MacBook Air, those export speeds were running at about five minutes and 40 seconds. So this drastically cut down the export time because of the dual encoders and decoders that the M4 Max chip has when you compare it to the M4 or the M4 Pro chip. Another reason you get the Mac Studio over the Mac Mini or one of Apple's laptops is for better thermal performance. And I know this has fans in it, but I honestly never heard the fans. They run really quiet and keep this cool and without having any sort of thermal throttling issues. I will say the Mac Studio definitely is bigger when you compare it to the Mac Mini. So if you're needing to travel or carry it around, you could realistically throw a Mac Mini in a backpack and hook it up to a monitor somewhere else. The Mac Studio just feels like it's a little too big to be doing that. 
but it fits perfectly fine under the Apple Studio display. So it really doesn't take up a ton of space on the desktop, but it definitely does have the larger footprint than the M4 Mac Mini. After editing tons of videos with this and also comparing to the M4 Pro Mac Mini and the M4 Mac Mini, the M4 MacBook Air, you definitely notice and feel that the Mac Studio has more power to it. I think if you remove the Mac Studio from the equation and you just use the other computers, then you definitely feel like those were totally fine and could get the job done. But when I went back and forth, that's when I started to notice that this just handles everything a little bit smoother and there's less lag or hiccups whenever you're doing things like timeline scrolling on Final Cut Pro. Things like that are just better and faster on the Mac Studio, but you do pay for that if you wanna go for the Mac Studio over one of the different Apple computers. I think this makes the Mac Studio overkill for most people. Really the main reason that you should get the Mac Studio instead of a Mac Mini or the Mac Mini M4 Pro or the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro is if you really need to have the top of the line performance and if your time is really money and you need to have the fastest workflows possible, that's when the Mac Studio is gonna be an excellent computer to be buying because you're just gonna be able to go through footage so much faster, spit out videos, export, render a lot faster and be able to review footage again. And it's just the little things that it does a little bit faster that adds up over time to help you make more money and to save more of your time. So that's really why you spend the extra money on the Mac Studio. Invest more into the Mac Studio over one of the other Apple computers so that you're able to drastically increase your outputs and to just be a lot more efficient. Let's talk the cons of the Mac Studio. If you wanna transport it, it's definitely a little bit on the large size for that, so I would not buy this computer just for the sake of moving it around all the time. The next thing with this is the upgrades on it. So the base model of this includes a 512 gigabyte SSD and it has 36 gigabytes of RAM, which is fine. And it has the bin processor, so not quite as good of GPU performance as if you would upgrade. And it costs five or $600 if you wanna to upgrade to that better M4 Max chip. Although this does also push the RAM up to 48 gigabytes. And I would say most people who are buying this to use professionally should really be considering the one terabyte SSD as well. So depending on the configuration you get, you can go all the way up from getting this computer at $2,000 to $2,700 or $3,100 or $3,200. So the upgrade pricing is definitely really going to push the budget a little bit with the Mac Studio. And then you get very close to M3 Ultra territory. And this isn't a video made to compare the M3 Ultra to the M4 Max Mac Studio, but you just start to have to consider things whenever you start to add the different upgrade pricing on it. I also really would think that Apple needs to just make this come stock with the one terabyte SSD because that's really the baseline if you're doing any sort Sort of professional video production because those files really do add up fast. Especially if you're buying a powerful machine like the Mac Studio, that's when you're probably gonna be using those higher resolution, higher data rate files than if you're buying something like the Mac Mini. So Apple's upgrade pricing still continues to harm the Mac Studio, and I think the base model needs to be upgraded a little bit in terms of those specs that they come with. The only other complaint I have with this computer is the ports on the front are USB ports and they're not actually Thunderbolt ports, which I use a lot of Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 5 external SSDs, and I really wanna be able to take advantage of the faster speeds those have, and it's nice to be able to swap them out really quickly and to just plug them in on the front. So my workaround is I just got a longer Thunderbolt cable, leave it plugged into the back and have it hanging out the front of the Mac Studio, or sometimes I also run this with Thunderbolt docks, and some of those have front Thunderbolt 5 or Thunderbolt 4 ports on them. But I think that if there was a way Apple could put those on the front of the M4 Max chip, that would make this feel like an even better buy because you'd be getting even faster ports. But I'm sure there's some sort of limitations with the M4 Max chip architecture that makes it where the front ports just cannot support that faster data rate because the back ports are all already using all the data that's available. But if they could somehow make the front ports, Thunderbolt ports on the Mac Studio, I think that would be much welcomed. So the Mac Studio is basically a perfect desktop setup if you demand power and performance. I also really recommend getting the Mac Studio and pairing it with something like the Apple Studio display or just some really nice desktop accessories. I'm gonna have links to all my favorite accessories for the Mac Studio in the description below. I also think this pairs really well with the MacBook Air because for the same price as getting an M4 Max Mac MacBook Pro, you can actually get a Mac Studio and a MacBook Air. And with the MacBook Air, you're gonna have better portability. And with the Mac Studio, you're gonna have better power and performance than you would with the M4 Max MacBook Pro. So that's kind of a nice two for one punch if you wanna get the Mac Studio and a MacBook Air. Instead of just getting one MacBook Pro, you can end up with two machines instead of one. So buy the Mac Studio if you need to have power and performance and if your output determines the income that you make because this computer is amazingly efficient, very fast and very snappy, and will just get out of the way of you getting your job done. 
If you're interested in buying the Mac Studio, I have links for my favorite models in the description below. I also have a video where I walk you through all the different options with the Mac Studio to help you pick out the best one for you. Or if you need personalized help picking out a Mac, check out the link in the description below. Visit me at my website, fill out a form, and I'll get back to you with personalized Mac recommendations. Like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.